Now we have a, a second speaker in this series. So um, we have a, a venerable Dr. Tashi Sering uh, covering the same topic, Anatta, uh, from the uh, Mahayana or from the uh, kind of uh, um, Bodhisattvayan uh, kind of uh, tradition. So uh, we have 15 minutes to you, uh, venerable Dr. Tashi Sering, please carry on. Please look at page number 33. Uh, first, I'm going to read my paper, and later on, uh, if there is a question, I will try to answer, okay? Page number 33. Actually, the topic is not new for Tibetan scholars, okay? Selflessness or emptiness. Introduction. Generally, each of the four schools of Buddhism insists that <clears throat> it is the middle way school because of hours because it avoids the two extremes, namely Uchedvada, nihilism, and Shashvatvada, eternalism. For instance, number one, Vebhashika says that all phenomena included in the five bases, matter, mind, mental factors, non-associated compositional factors, and uncompounded phenomena are inherently existent. Therefore, they are free from nihilism. The self, external growth phenomena, the continuity of mind, and so on are respectively imputed upon the aggregates, indivisible atoms, the momentary mind, and so on. Therefore, they are free from eternalism. Number two, Sautantrika says that only three among the five bases, that is matter, mind, and mental factors, are inherently existent. Therefore, they are free from nihilism. Other two bases, the self and the continuity of mind, etc., which have already been described, do not exist inherently. Therefore, they are free from eternalism. Number three, Yogacharya or Chitamatra school <coughs> says that the mind and emptiness are inherently existent. Therefore, they are free from nihilism. All duality of subjects and objects are illusory and not inherently existent. Therefore, they are free from eternalism. Number four, as against these views, Madhyamika argues that <clears throat> to regard anything as existent leads to externalism, and to regard anything as non-existent leads to nihilism. Madhyamika awards both these extremes, and hence it is the middle way school in the true sense of the term. Partitsam Utpada or Tibetan origination. Partitsam Utpada, <clears throat> Tibetan origination, and shunyata or emptiness are words frequently found in Buddhist discourses, sutras, and scriptures, shastras. All four schools of Buddhism accept dependent origination as well as emptiness, but they have various ways of interpreting dependent origination and emptiness. The special Mathemika interpretation of dependent origination is as follows. Three other schools of <clears throat> Buddhism accept that phenomena are dependently originated as well as inherently existent. They say if all phenomena are empty, then there would not be the possibility of the functioning causal efficacy, arthakriya of things. Since the phenomena have functionality, they must be naturally or inherently existent. For instance, we can see wave on the ocean the wave is not different from the ocean, but due to special causes and conditions, it seems that there is a wave different from the ocean. In the same manner, inherently or naturally existent mind is there and the objects we perceive are the projections of the mind and not different from the mind. So the ocean and the mind are really there. They say, if all phenomena are naturally empty, as Mathemica admits, then there would not be any functioning thing, and they would become like a castle in the sky, the son of a barren woman, etc., as Nagarjuna presents the realist view. If all these phenomena are empty, then there would not be any arising and ceasing. The consequence is there would not be four noble truths for you, Mathemika. 
In order to respond to the realist argument, Nagarjuna says, if all these phenomena are not empty, then there would not be any arising and ceasing. The consequence is that there would not be four noble truths for you, realists. Inherently existent and dependent origination are contradictory from the perspective of Madhyamika as stated by Nagarjuna. <laughs> How is it rational to say that nature is created? That is because naturally existent phenomena means not artificial and not depending on others. If phenomena naturally or inherently existed, then it cannot be dependent originated. And if a phenomenon is dependent, then it cannot be naturally or inherently existent. Nagarjuna has stated in the letter to a friend, <clears throat> this dependent origination is the profound treasure teaching of Buddha. Those who see this dependent origination <coughs> probably can see Buddha, the supreme aspect of seeing reality. It is also stated in a sutra requested by Anautaptaka, the phenomenon which is the product of condition is unborn. That does not have the nature which is naturally born. Depending on condition is emptiness. Having the knowledge of emptiness is carefulness. Nagarjuna said, as there is no phenomenon which is not dependent, there is also no phenomenon which is not empty. Furthermore, he has stated, in which emptiness is possible, everything is possible. In which emptiness is not possible, everything is not possible. So, dependent origination is stated from the perspective of conventional truth, and emptiness is stated from the perspective of ultimate truth. Shunata or emptiness. All the four schools of Buddhism have to accept that, accept the four seas of Dharma, which are, number one, all compounded phenomena are impermanent. Number two, all contaminated phenomena are suffering. And number three, all phenomena are empty and selfless. And fourth, Liberation is peace. Among these, th there exist different interpretations on the third one, that is, all phenomena empty and selfless. There are two interpretations of emptiness, which are, number one, empty by one's own nature, <coughs> swashunata, and number two, empty by others, parishunata. All the four schools of Buddhism, excluding Vasiputriya, accept that there is no inherently existent self or atma, Therefore, Atma is empty by itself, whereas the rest of the three realist schools of Buddhism accept both of the emptinesses, emptiness by itself <coughs> and emptiness by other phenomena. Dreams and so forth are truly not existent there, therefore they are empty by themselves, whereas indivisible atoms, mind and mental factors are truly existent there and not empty by themselves, but empty by other phenomena. <clears throat> For instance, as indivisible atom is not there in the mind and the mind is not here in the atom, therefore they are called empty by other phenomena. They also claim that they are real Madhyamika because of eradicating both of the extremes of eternalism and nihilism concerning the five bases or foundations of phenomena as explained before. Meaning of Shunata, emptiness as selflessness. <clears throat> Emptiness refers to the selflessness of a person and selflessness of phenomena. Here, the self refers mainly to inherently existing phenomena as well as conceptual thoughts and other objects. Number one, proving selflessness of person, putkal neratama. In Buddhism, only Vatsiputra school accepts inexpressible, inherently, and substantially existent self. They say there is self which is substantially existent one, but neither identical nor different with aggregates. Therefore, it is called inexpressible. Madhyamika rejects this view by saying that if the self exists inherently or substantially, then it cannot become inexpressible. One has to say whether it is identical or identical with or different from the aggregates. If one cannot say either that it is identical with or different from the aggregates, then it means that self is not substantially existent. Then it will become imputed or designated phenomenon. So, in a nutshell, if it is inexpressible, then it cannot be substantially existent. And if it is substantially existent, then it cannot be inexpressible. Since substantially existent and inexpressible are contradictory phenomena. Madhyamikas give three-fold refutation of the self. Number one, 
refutation through examining on each part of the body and mind. Teeth, hair, and nail do not have a self. Self is not born in blood, etc. To even the six, six consciousnesses are not the self. Number two, refuting the self imputed by others. Sankhya says there is a permanent self, and the permanent self experiences all the 23 impermanent objects, phenomena of color, sounds, and so forth, created by the primordial matter, pradhana. This permanent self experiencing the object in color and so forth is also unreal, since the permanence cannot change from the situation of experiencing and not experience the object because objects are always not always there. Number three, refuting the self through the seven alternatives regarding a chariot. Mathematicals do not accept that. Number one, the chariot is identical with its parts. Number two, the chariot is different from its parts. Number three, chariot depends upon its parts. Number four, parts depend upon chariot. Number five, the chariot possesses its parts. These five are mentioned by Nagarjuna. Number six, <clears throat> chariot is configuration of parts. Number seven, chariot is the conglomeration of parts. These two are added by Chandrakirti. There are two different views whether or not Madhyamika accept these seven aspects in conventional truth. Number two, proving selflessness of phenomena, dharma neratma. Selflessness or emptiness of phenomena has been explained and argued out in various ways in the Madhyamika literature. Here we will consider five such modes of explanation argumentation. Number one, the five Madhyamika arguments as given by the Tibetan scholar Taksang Lozawa. Number two, putting emptiness of body, feeling, consciousness, and emptiness as described in Bodhisattva Chara Avatara. Number three, 20 emptinesses from the perspective of object or phenomena of Dharma as described in Prashna Paramita Sutra and Madhyamika Avatara. Number four, proving emptiness through examining the arising from four extremes as given in Prashna Mula Madhyamika Karika, chapter one. Number five, explaining of the perfect view of emptiness through freedom from the four perfections, namely existence, non-existence, both and neither. Let us consider the five modes of explanations or argumentations one by one as follows. The five Madhyamika arguments the Tibetan scholar Taksan Lozawa said, in order to ascertain the ultimate truth, there are arguments from number one, the lack of being one and many, number two, diamond slivers or sprongs, number three, refuting the existence and non-existence of result, number four, refuting the protection out of four alternatives, and number five, dependence. These arguments investigate the nature, cause, result, or effect, both cause and result and effect, and merely appearances. In this way, the view of selflessness of phenomena is established. <clears throat> Number one, the argument from lack of one and many investigates nature. <coughs> Syllogism, all the phenomena, <coughs> such as sprout and so forth, do not truly exist because of lack of one and many. <coughs> when we report an indivisible atom and mind, explained before, which are the cause, then causes, then all the gross form and mind, which are the results or which are produced from them, are also reported. Okay. Okay, now I would like to stop here. Okay. So, <clears throat> thank you for uh, remaining within time. And uh, now here, uh, it's very clear that uh, uh, Venerable Dr. Tashi Sering, uh, he covered a lot of things, uh, beginning from the uh, kind of uh, a brief uh, introduction of the uh, different schools and then uh, uh, an explanation of the uh, Pratitya Samutapad and then coming down to the meaning of the Shunyata, how Pudgal uh, Neratma and then uh, Dharma Neratma were uh, kind of uh, uh, proved through the reasoning. So uh, he have more uh, here on down the line in the pages. I think uh, if you have time, you can go through those, and then uh, you are most welcome to come up with your question later on. The 
Thank you very much.